<laughs> that should be the thumbnail. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Happy. Are we here? Are we awake? Ha are we awake? Are we awake? Yes, we, are, we awake. are awake. We are here. Happy Saturday. Happy birthday. Thanks. You're welcome. Did you know it's your birthday? I'm 20. Five. 25 again, again today. Congratulations. <laughs> and you got you a younger man. Hey. 23. What's that? That's me. I am a cougar. Cougar? Rawr. And you're my cub. Ooh. Little man cub. <laughs> <laughs> God. That's bad. Okay. Reel it back. Let's go ahead and reel it in. Let's jump in. So, honestly, happy birthday. It's <laughs> Thank a you. great day for you. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for stopping in yeah. on this Saturday. Yeah. Um, it's good to see you guys, though we can't see you. We can only see us, but we know you're there. Yeah. So, anyway. So, before we start, though, I would like, to, because you said we can't see you. Yo, Justin, thank what's you. up? <laughs> we, Happy uh, birthday from Justin. I know. Thank you. Um, so, since you said that, just made me think, I th we should probably go ahead and say this before we start. Um, the thing about not being able to see them and they can see us and we're talking. We're going to be doing this thing right here, but in Emerge style like a one-day training, oh. but virtually, so we will be doing it where we can interact on more Zoom. on like a Zoom kind of thing coming up June 19th. Yeah, that's a whole day with me. I'm yeah. doing probably five hours of content on everything from courage to commitment to structured self-discipline, uh, all the stuff to help you with business and you know, marketplace stuff, but also just the structure in your own life. So we're going to do that, emerge virtual We've been doing that a lot. As you guys know, I work with a lot of teams across the country um, all the time. It takes up so much of my day. It's what I've been doing so much of. So we don't travel as much now, which is, that's great. I get to reach people and I still get to be here with the family, which is awesome. But we're gonna do this thing called Emerge Virtual. And uh, that's the 19th. So you can register for that on RonnieDoss.com. Yeah, so, details. Yeah, that's cool. Coming. We'll give you more details yeah, on that as we soon. get closer to it. But that's awesome. We're really excited about that. And Let's it's the day it. before your birthday. It is. That, that will be is. the day before my birthday. A lot yeah. of birthday happening. So many in May. My dad's is May 5th. My mom and stepdad are May 20th. Mine's May 23rd. And then we got you in June, June. and Addison in June. So we got a lot of people. We got a lot of we got Within a lot about of a party. month or so. It's a big party. It never yeah. stops. We're going to party today, by the way. It's going to be a fun day. Yes, I'm taking my <laughs> cougar out. <laughs> the man cub's gonna take the cougar man. out. What's yeah. up, Travis? Hey, so, Erica. Um, so yes. really get me thinking that I'm older than you. Birthday, she is. She's six <laughs> years older than me. It doesn't show though. I don't think you look a lot older than I'm me. I'm not older than you. You don't look much older than me. Not older than you. No, you're a little bit older than me. Thank you, All right. Erica. <laughs> hey, Erica. All right, so let's do it. So you, you have better be careful. A question. I know. I don't want to get beat up. Question today. Let's roll with it. Yeah. So we started ours on Wednesday with taking questions. Or this week we've been taking questions or topics from our online family and anybody that gets any of our emails that subscribe to his website. So um, we had some awesome ones that we spent a lot of time on on Wednesday, so we did not get to everything. Thanks, Travis. We didn't get to everything on Wednesday, so we wanted that to kind of carry over today. So this is going to maybe be a mouthful. Go maybe, for it. I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to try to wrap this up into one question, question, but it is basically trying to understand where we stand in our faith. Okay. And when we feel like we hear something from God to tell us to do something, mm -hmm. and we feel like that's being pulled from us, but we're not really sure how to take the right steps in the right direction. Okay. Or if it, or if sometimes it could be like a crutch of like, well, I'm waiting on God, or I'm waiting on this to happen, or I'm waiting. So it's not like um, I'm going to go ahead and take the first steps myself, mm -hmm. and then God will follow, but. Okay. Does that make any sense? Yeah, so reconciling faith you may is, be able to wrap in a up sense. A little better. Uh, yeah, so here's what I hear mm -hmm. reconciling some faith with um, taking the, action, the willingness to take action. Yeah. yeah, I hear that a lot, right? So it's there's always been this, this phrase for people of faith, any faith, not just Christian faith, um, but lots of faith. Well, I'm just waiting on God, waiting to hear from God. And I think that's, you know, that's wonderful. But one of the things that I have said so many times, guys, is that wait is a four-letter word, right? We oftentimes you know, say that bad words are four-letter words, but wait, W-A-I-T, uh, busy, B-U-S-Y, quit, Q-U-I-T, all these different things are four-letter words. And a lot of times we look for things that will justify our not taking action and doing something that we really believe in our heart of hearts that we need to do. And I think from the faith component, and I'll talk about the mindset of this in just a bit, but the faith component of it is that 
my take on faith is that you it's what you're willing to pursue. That faith is displayed by what you're willing to pursue, what you're willing to do, what your day-to-day -day looks like. Uh, I have spoken in front of hundreds of thousands of people now um, around the world over the last, what, 11, 11 years or so. And I get to meet lots of people. They come to product tables of mine, they'll meet me. It's wonderful. I get to meet them. But a lot of times people just say, well, I'm waiting and I'm waiting. And that becomes a real problem because it's almost like saying that if you believe in God, whatever that is for you, that if you, you don't believe that God is big enough to lead you in the right direction, even if you make the wrong decision. And it's not that you're trying to make the wrong decision, but I think that there's a lot bigger game going on here than just sitting around and waiting on a green light. Now, what that means, it doesn't mean that you're hasty, it doesn't mean that, that you don't think things through a bit, but I think sometimes it is a crutch. I think that waiting becomes a thing where it gives us permission to not live with courage, it gives us permission to not go for what today really is, and the fact of the matter is, the future always shows up in the form of the present right now, and the present is where you get things done. If you don't do things today and you continue to procrastinate, you're going to show up in a future that you didn't prepare very well for and that you aren't equipped for. One of my mentors used to say, you're not blessed by what you get, you're blessed by what you can keep. And the way that you keep things is through practice, it's through conditioning yourself, it's being able to carry the load, carry the weight of something. And the only way that you do that and you gain that endurance is to step in and be bold. Um, you don't get stronger by just standing around in the gym working out. You get stronger by getting underneath the weights, pushing through the resistance. And, you know, that to me has always been my approach. And, you know, people are like, man, you get to go to a lot of places. And what a friend of mine used to say, Ronnie, you have turbo faith. That's what he used to call it. I'll never forget that. He said, you have yeah. turbo faith. He said, you just go for whatever it is that you believe. And the fact of the matter is, is that's very true. But if you wait and, and you just sit around and you put off what you could do today until tomorrow, uh, you just show up in a future, I think, without the extent of refined capacity that you could have had if you would have just been bold and started something today. People wait to start diets, they wait to start exercises, they wait to do things in their relationship to make it better, they wait to write a book, they wait to start a new career, they wait to start a business. They wait, and 90% of people, guys, I would think that at some point I could say, I'm a bit of an expert in this. I've talked to and worked with enough people around the world that waiting is something so many people do, and all it gives us is this sense of regret and a sense that we're not on purpose and that we're not making things happen. And, you know, I, I, it was Da Vinci that said, it's easier to resist in the beginning than it is in the end. Mm -hmm. And when you get to the end, anything that you've put off or that you've neglected winds up becoming this thing that overtakes you when you're vulnerable, when you're frustrated, when you feel like your life's not on purpose, when you're a bit insecure. And nothing, nothing makes us more insecure than waiting on something that we know we should do. And people ask me all the time, how do you develop self-confidence? And self-confidence is developed through consistency. That's it. The way you get better at anything, the way you feel better about yourself is through consistency. If you can see yourself getting up early in the morning, like doing something like this and saying, hey, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I attack my day. And I go for it. You start to see yourself doing things that would have been much easier for you to not do. But now you start to have a different narrative on the inside of what's possible for you. And you start to believe in yourself. And when you start believing in yourself, what's really powerful about believing in yourself is once you take a step into the unknown and you conquer that moment, you start asking yourself, well, heck, what can I do next? Like, if I could do that, then what can I do next, right? What could be next for me in my future? And for me, that's what faith is all about. And so this is not a faith conversation. Um, I'm not trying to have a, a, it's not a religious kind of debate on any of this. Uh, I think there's a lot of us that we need to expand our thinking as to what faith is and what we would say God could do in our life. But I think you find out what that is by being willing to stretch and being willing to move forward just a bit. And so um, Abraham Lincoln, I think, said that you can't escape the responsibility of today, uh, of tomorrow by evading it today. And what you put off till tomorrow, right, will eventually show up for you and it will be, it'll be pressing and it will become something that could have been urgent for you, but now you're living with urgency um, and in everything that you do and it taps you out because you just feel like you're spread in a thousand different directions. And so if you don't live it with a sense of urgency in the moment, everything becomes urgent. You have to live with urgency in every area of your life. You can never relax. And I just don't think that that's, that's healthy. And so um, 
Anyway, uh, there was another quote that I was going to share. It said, On only put off until tomorrow what you're willing to die left undone, die with undone. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty, I mean, that's pretty bold, right? Yeah. But I mean, on some level, that's, that's, that's what we do. So anyway, yeah, courage, just, uh, taking I, it on. Anyway. I, uh, I, I just keep thinking about something that I've heard you say so many times. If this is something where it is a faith conversation and putting your faith in God to help you get through something or get to a goal or whatever, you've I've heard you say so many times, God is a big boy, and if you just take the right steps, He's given you all the tools that you need to reach a goal, to move forward towards something, to have have a better relationship, um, get a promotion, like whatever it is, start start a new business, write a book. He's given you all of those tools. You just have to have that faith to step forward. Understanding that he's gonna be right here with you going, you know what? I gave this all to you You can keep going and I'm right here with you even through the unknown. Yeah, so what if what if one of the forms? Uh, it's what is a what if a lack of faith simply showed up in the form of confusion? What if a lack of faith showed up in the form of a lack of urgency? What if we say I have a lot of faith, but maybe a lack of faith shows up in these different forms and that could be casualness Maybe being casual with your life is a form of a lack of faith. Maybe um, just, yeah, what are you doing? I'm writing a note. I just oh, have a thought. Taking I have notes to write it down. on what I had to say. <laughs> yeah. I, have I don't blame doing you. When I'm looking down I this way, I'm writing notes. notes. Too. I would too. And it also, need... it also says that Jennifer Doss is watching, and I am, so I can look at your comments if I need to. <laughs> oh, she's watching comments. So I'm if you watching. have comments on any of this, yeah, but so, you know, we talk about faith, and faith is such a vague kind of a thing. Like, everybody's like, well, I have faith. Even people that say they don't have faith, they're having faith in their belief that there's no such thing as faith. We're all in a, about what we're believing. But what if, what if a lack of faith, instead of saying, hey, I don't have faith, what if it's the more positive term of saying, yeah, well, I'm casual, which means that I don't have a whole lot of faith that I could get it done right now, and so nothing's a big deal. I'm apathetic. It doesn't really matter. Um, what if, what if you know, I'm confused all the time? What if that's a lack of faith? Uh, what if, you know, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. A lack of passion is, in a sense, a lack of faith in believing that today really does matter and I can get after it. The only way you build a decent future is to be willing to step into the unknown. Being willing to step into the unknown is to uh, move to another city. We've done that many times. Why? Because it's what we wanted to do. We didn't want to live in the same spot. Nothing wrong with it. We can always move back. I talked to some of my mentors and guys that I look up to that have ran very, very substantial, very successful companies. And they said, Ronnie, if you wait, you'll wait the rest of your life. You have to experience some things to know. And, you know, I've been to, I don't know how many different countries, done trainings in I think it's 11, is that the number? Yeah, 11, yeah. Uh, anyway, a lot of countries. And I can tell you, you never experience what those countries are about and what cultures are about um, until you go, until you immerse yourself into it. And that can mean moving to another city. It can mean starting a new career. It can mean starting on a new goal. You have to immerse yourself into something to see what you can grow into. And I think a lot of times people just miss that. And that's, that's the thing that I think is so, that's problematic for us is because when you know you're missing opportunities, you start to think, man, am I ever going to do this? I mean, is it always going to be this way? And that regret starts to sink in. And when it does, you just stop living with, it's like living with passion. You know, Truett Cathy, who's the, the founder and CEO of, of uh, Chick-fil-A, you know, he said, when, when your brain gets bored, he said, you lose motivation. And so he always talked about keeping the employees engaged and doing things. And if you've ever been to a Chick-fil-A compared to let's say McDonald's, very different mindset when you walk in the door. But he said that when you get bored, your motivation leaves. And so one of the things for us is we just, and having kids, it's hard to get bored, but it's like, I, I don't want to be bored. And, and here's the, I want you to talk for a second. But if you have some margin in your day, use it to keep you motivated. Like if you have an extra 30 minutes between taking care of the kids, if you have an extra 30 minutes in between a call that you have to do, if you have an extra 30 minutes between something that's gotta go on, use that margin to build towards something better for you tomorrow. And what happens is you start to build up momentum, and as you build momentum, you break through all these thresholds that you've had in your life. John Maxwell called uh, momentum the great exaggerator, and he talked about how you could take a train with let's say five cars behind it, pulling five carts behind it, all of them loaded down with rocks. And he said, if you take that train moving at 20 miles per hour with all those rocks behind it, it could break through a five foot reinforced concrete wall. 
But if you stop that locomotive with those five cars behind it and you just took one rock, one small rock out of the back of that car and slid it under the front wheel, you couldn't get that locomotive moving again. And he said, that's the power of momentum. And he said, we lose momentum when we procrastinate. And I've heard people say that procrastination is a thief that never gets caught. It steals everything from your day. It steals joy, it steals passion, it steals excitement, and you'll never catch it because you keep procrastinating. That it's the art of keeping up with what should have been done yesterday. And I mentioned in our last Facebook Live, a guy named Jordan Maxwell. Jordan Maxwell talks about how through neglect, you sweep things under the rug. Peterson. Jordan Peterson, Peterson not Jordan Maxwell. Maxwell. He's another guy that I used to watch. <laughs> Wild man. But Jordan Peterson says that what you sweep under the rug, eventually, one, you trip over it, which I've said many times, but whatever you sweep under the rug, it's like fueling a monster. And you fuel and feed this monster through neglect. And one day, it peeps its head, and it devours you, and, and you lose. You lose so much of what your life could have been. And so finding one thing that fuels you, that excites you, that you would do every day, no matter what, if you only have five minutes for it, or you have an hour and five minutes for it, or three hours for it, you jump in and you maximize the day. Otherwise, you stop living with any urgency, it becomes a pattern, it becomes a habit, and the next thing you know, you're waiting until tomorrow for something to be provided to you that you think is not there today. And that's a mindset. And the reason people procrastinate is because of fear, because of it's a pattern that has seeped in, and now people become addicted to this casual, laissez-faire kind of approach to life. And it's, it, hey, whatever works for somebody's fine, but I've worked with enough people and heard enough people say, you know what, I waited on doing this, and I, that to me, that's, that's what we should have. Or, or addicted to the feeling of waiting to the last minute, and then that rush of, oh, I gotta get this done, now. Mm -hmm. Went in procrastination. Is it, could that be a thing? Yeah, I mean, I've heard it said. Yeah. I've read that waiting to if it weren't for the last minute, nothing would ever get done, and that's very, very true. Guilty right? sometimes. Guilty. Look, we all do it, but I think <laughs> yeah. at some point, if you don't structure your day, if you don't build your day, figuring out what you can attack first thing first, then you never will. Mm -hmm. Like, if, I don't know if you guys have ever done this before, but it's like if you get into the pattern after, let's say, a week or two of getting up early. Then when you don't get up early, you're like, man, you, you're like, man, I slept in late today, man. I got to get back up early. Your brain, neuroplasticity is a real thing. Neuroscientists used to say that by the time you're eight years old, 80% of your personality is formed. That is crap. That is not true. You can change your personality easily by putting yourself into a different personal reality. I heard Joe Dispenza talking about that. He was a chiropractor. He was at Life University. He's on the board. Phenomenal guy. The guy's so brilliant. But he said you can change your personality by putting yourself into a different personal reality. And if you will immerse yourself into a new form of tension, it will strengthen you. And the next thing you know, you have a stronger capacity to hold success. And some people can't handle success because it, it overtakes them because they didn't prepare along the way. You don't win the championship on the court, not that night in front of the lights. You win the championship all the days that you get up when nobody's looking, when you read, when you invest, when you exercise, when you do the things other people won't do so you can have stuff other people can't have. And that's what many of us put off on because I think it's just so much easier to not operate that way. It's very safe. It's, it's anyway, go ahead. I talk too much. I, I <laughs> no, do. I just start Stop talking. It. This is what I do like eight to 10 hours a day, sometimes 14 hours a day with people. Um, and it, I love doing it and I love helping people move forward, but I'm also clear that I have to be willing to move forward in my own life. Asking somebody to do something that I'm not willing to do is garbage. Like you, you, anybody can do that. You can put anybody on a platform. I know lots of great platform speakers, guys, that you put them on a platform and they're amazing. Their talk is amazing. It sounds good. Their mannerisms are perfect. They got it all tied in, but you take them off the platform and you put them down on the same level with other people. They don't know how to operate because they don't have the, the, the beingness of digging in with people. Mm -hmm. And at this day and age, noise, there's so much noise, there's so much garbage, and there's so many people talking about things they're not doing in their life. It's like you wanna have a success coach, you gotta have somebody that's willing to create success in their own life, they have to be disciplined. I don't want somebody telling me how to live my life that's not taking their own life on. I'm not gonna do it. Like I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna go to a quote unquote expert that can't make it happen. And there's a lot of that. And so I think that the, the basis for it, uh, for really making things happen, is having the courage to step in, develop some discipline, and get after it.
That's the key. That's a pin. We don't drop pins. It's a mic. It we a need mic. to drop I should have mic. held it right here and then went. It's Saturday morning <laughs> on my wife's Saturday birthday. Saturday morning. Let's you... go. I dropped my pin. My mic. That was the mic drop. Anyway, <laughs> mic. go for it. Actually, hey, good really morning, Peter Burt. What's up, man? Thank you for all my birthday wishes, you guys. I'm so yes, happy I that you're here. I'm getting ahead instead of being reactionary. Yeah, so that's good. Justin. That actually, um, I wrote it down because he has such a really good conversation about react being reactive versus creative. So I would like for you in just a second to talk about that. I think that's a good piggyback off of what you're talking about right here. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I had written down, I write all of this stuff down um, while he's talking so that I don't forget my thoughts. But um, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of backtracking a little bit. But I had this thought of really defining what you feel like your faith is and what it is not. It is not procrastination. It is not confusion. It is not A, B, C, D then define what it is. It is passion. It is being excited. It is moving forward in my business. It is writing a book. So figuring out exactly what that is in your in your faith, what it is and what it is not. And I think that way you can start to at least recognize and then take action steps toward and then walk through the fear by taking action. Um, and then I can't remember what it was that I, you said that made me think. Stop assuming what could be. Stop assuming what could be. Yeah. Um, what, I, we can move on. No. I, I might get it back in a minute. Oh, but I what could go down. wrong in the sense what of that? What could go wrong, what could go right. Okay. Once you start making action steps toward a goal or what, what it is that you want, mm -hmm. stop assuming what could be right or what could be wrong or what could go wrong Yeah. in so, the process. Yeah, so it's the conversation of what you align with. So faith is about aligning with possibilities versus, versus predictions. You're smiling because you're reading your mom's comment. Yes, hi, mom. <laughs> I know. My, mom, my mom's always on these. So, I love so it. Supportive. I know. So supportive. So um, supportive. So my sister is on here too. I saw her. Hi, sister. Hi, sister. Um, so the, it's what you align with, right? So faith is about what you align with. So you align with one of two things, and then I'll go to reactive and creative. You either align today with possibility, or you align with prediction. Now, what does fear do? Fear tries to align you with a prediction of worst case scenario. Uh, one author that I've read a lot calls it awfulizing, which is you can lay around and create the worst case scenario in your life that kicks off certain chemicals, then you feel a certain way, that becomes your reality, and you tend to respond or react out of how you feel. We are very much emotional people. We behave based on emotion. We don't typically behave on logic. And so uh, when it comes to this place where you're acting out of uh, what I'd say is reactivity versus creativity, um, you, you're reactive to, for many of us, what is fear, fear of loss, fear of screwing it up, fear of, which ultimately always boils down to caring what someone else thinks. In our trainings, what we always do is this idea of embarrassment. And people go, well, man, that embarrassed me. When you're embarrassed, all it means is that you are simply attached to the opinion of another human being. Because you don't get embarrassed by yourself until you start thinking about what somebody else has done, what you've done wrong in somebody else's eyes. And so embarrassment is always an attachment to something outside of you. Fear is always an attachment to something outside of you. Because the moment you're centered and the moment you realize that everything that you need is right here in the present moment, you're not really afraid. You know, the biggest fear people have, and I talked to my daughter Addison about this the other night, um, the biggest fear that we have is of death. We don't want to die. And so what do we do? We filter every decision we make through not dying. We want to stick around for as long survival. as possible. It's survival. Yeah. And that's wonderful in the sense that it's there, that we don't jump off of a building, step out in traffic. We don't do stupid things. But survival and, and what we say surviving and thriving are not the same thing. They're a very different energy. And one of the things that we do to survive is that we hide behind these avatars that we build, which typically, if you guys know what an avatar is, like everybody's making those emoji yeah. avatar things. I did make one. I haven't done anything with it yet, but I did. I, was like, I got sucked in. I just want to see what I would look like. We're talking about procrastination, and you procrastinated on releasing your avatar to the world. Okay, I will do that. How am I supposed soon, to get anything done? As soon as we're done here. No, go. <laughs> it's your my, birthday. Um, you're going to get to see my avatar. Yes. Okay. It, so, yes. And Erica said, new things can be scary. Yeah. How do we be excited instead of scared? Well, the idea that you understand that excitement and fear are a lot alike, you just got to step forward anyway. It's like getting on the roller coaster, right? You can stand there watching it and get more and more afraid. Or you can say, all right, I'm getting in line and I'm getting on this thing and I'm going to do it. You know, either way, they're both almost the same, you know, and, and, and 
anyway. We had, well, yeah, we had, that's actually, I'm glad she asked that because we did have another question about fear and like what's going on right now and this, having this overall like doom and gloom kind of feeling right now. But the one thing that I would like to speak to is that there are going to be plenty of opportunities in our lives for us to be fearful and scared but also excited at the same time. Right now, it's just a little magnified, all of our fears of like, what is what? Hang on. Oh, Were you I thought you were giving me a high five. No, no. So let's talk about how this works for you. Yeah, that's where, that's where I was going with it. It's like, I can think of plenty of times in my life where I've been scared of doing something. Were you scared something. of me? Did I, I, intimidate was, you? I was scared to ask you out on a date. And she did. I actually did, though, you guys. We need to share she that She dared story me sometime. to go out on a date with her. How about that? 16 <laughs> years ago. Which yeah. I'm, I'm very intimidating. I mean, you can tell. I mean, just um, I'm just anyway. Let's talk about like the home birth yeah. thing. Let's talk about times where because this lady right here gave birth to our two children at home. She did a home birth, which is very very bold. That is unbelievably courageous. And there are people going, "Well, how would you do that?" Other people are like, "Yep, that's the way to do it." Yeah, but you did I mean, that. It, either way, like it, it's it's nuts giving birth. Period, but yes, that it's that nuts was very giving birth. <laughs> okay, just ignore. <laughs> okay, go ahead. That's just that's funny. Oh man, I mean, yeah, it so is. <laughs> I keep this thing okay. funny, guys. Okay, you have to keep it funny. Go for it. But were you scared then? Yes, it's scary either way. But doing something that I obviously you don't know what you're doing when you're giving birth for the first time but doing it in a very different kind of way can cause even more fear to set in for some people but now that i have done it two times i am way more confident that that's the only way i would ever want to do it and it was scary but it was lots of research it was a lot of pre preparation it was having experts experts in my corner knowing what they're doing so that being said, like I moved through that fear the first time, and then the second time around, I was like, you know what, I, You've already done I, it. I, I can't go back. Like this is right. this is the way to do it for me. When it comes to courage, it's this deal that you can't unpop the popcorn, and yeah. that is once you've stepped into something. And and Dr. Kanima said she walks in boldness, hands down, no doubt. There's another bold. You too, my friend. There. So, but <laughs> once you pop the popcorn, you can't unpop it. Once you've seen yourself doing something, there's just, you just don't give yourself permission to do less. And that's, you know, that's a, an, a that's a powerful thing. Um, you build a, a construct in your mind of what's possible for you. You step into it and you do it. And then the next thing, once you've done that, you're like, well, I did that. Now it's like I graduated from the fifth grade. Now I'm going to move on to the sixth grade. Mm -hmm. I finished sixth grade. Now I'm going to move on to the seventh grade. It's like I did it. I did it. And now you can't stop me. I'm not going to let you stop me. And so anyway, so does this mean that you guys are going to go through a third baby? Anyway. Uh, thanks, Peter. We're it's open. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Peter, uh, yes. We have no, I don't know. So. Um, anyway, but the, the idea, so once you step into the fear, you find out that it's okay and, and you can do it easier the next yeah, time. Yeah, and, sure. and you know what? People are so afraid of being afraid, but like living in fear means you're doing something, means you're moving forward and you're not just staying comfortable. So it's not a bad thing. Fear? Yeah. Oh. Fear is not a bad, it's like, it's, it's, it's one thing like people say, you need to be fearless. I don't think that that's a thing. I don't think it needs to be a thing. We not can't, we're not going to be fearless. We're going to be scared of something at some point. And, and if you immerse yourself into something that's going to cause you to grow and um, and just do something better, you're going to be fearful. That's yeah. just how it is. How about this one? Failure is not an option. We see that on t-shirts. That was like this, this NASA quote that was on the Apollo 13. It's like getting the guys back. In yes. that sense. In yes. that sense. But failure let me tell you, not. failure is definitely an option. Mm -hmm. And everybody that, that pushes the envelope on any, at any level, in any endeavor, they know failure is an option. Mm -hmm. You can trip, fall, fall on your face and totally screw it up. And there have been things, many things that, that I have messed up. There's been things we have messed up that we didn't do as well as we should have done. But you know what? The only way that you learn is to throw yourself into it anyway. So failure is an option. It is always an option. It will always be an option. And so my question would be is instead of saying that fear controls me, is like what's the story you tell yourself about the fear? Like if you messed it up, if you started a new career or a new business and it didn't work, like so what? 
like you messed it up and then you got people that are like judging you going, oh, they screwed it up. Well, guess what? If people are judging you, they're not doing better than you. People that do better than you never judge you. I don't worry about people that aren't making things happen. I just don't. I don't give myself time to think about those things. And so people aren't going to be judging you unless they're doing less than what you're doing. And at that point, why are you worried about them anyway? And so I think it's, it's not so much fear. It's John F. Kennedy. The only thing we have to fear is, is fear itself, right? I think that was John F. Kennedy. But it's, it's like failure is an option. It will always be an option. So big deal. What if you fail? Who cares? What are you afraid? Somebody's going to laugh at you? Like if you, you do that and you screw it up, like what are you afraid? Somebody's going to laugh at you? Most likely that person laughing at you is not doing anything oh, in any way, right? Yeah. The only people that have time to worry about whether you're doing anything and succeeding or not are people that aren't doing anything. Because they have time to sit back and I judge you and watch you. I have no time at this point in my life to sit around and judge what somebody else is doing or not doing. If they win, wonderful. If they screw it up, hey, great. That's fine. Hopefully they're learning from it and they're going to keep moving forward. Everybody that I know that I am close to that I and I have friends that are just doing some incredible things and I'm so happy to be a part of the journey of helping them coaching them. I have people that are multiple seven figure income earners that are killing it and crushing it and doing well. But I can tell you the reason they're doing well is that they're focused on what they need to do in their day and going for it, mm -hmm. not waiting on what somebody else is doing, not comparing to what somebody else is doing. When I first started getting into the mindset and the leadership development arena, I heard people say, don't compete, don't compare, don't complain. Those were the three things. And I thought, oh yeah, that sounds good, it rhymes. But you know what? That's the truth. I have nobody else to compete with except for me. Like I compete with what I did yesterday. Am I getting better? Am I getting sharper? Am I learning new things? I compete with who I was. I don't compare to anybody else like because nobody else's journey looks like my journey. My journey doesn't look like somebody else's journey. I don't know what the hell, sorry, what the heck somebody else has gone through. I have no idea what somebody else has gone through. So to judge and compare and go, oh, well, they're there. I should be there. It's stupid. It's like, you know, apples to oranges. That's stupid, right? Mm -hmm. And then complaining. Most people complain because they're not as far along as they think they should be, which is ultimately telling yourself that you're going to be frustrated today because you're not as far along as what you decided you how far along you should have been because based on what you already decided with information from your past and I'm not too worried about past information if I get some new information I'm going to use it today I'm not going to go oh well I used to be that and man I, I this is just how it always has been and you know what it just doesn't serve anybody and so I don't think much about the past at all I don't. We have photo albums. We have pictures. We can look at those things and go, oh, that's where we were. That's what we did. That's great. But our future, I think, is going to be way better than anything we've ever experienced in the past. And the only way that happens is to take on the present moment. The future always shows up in the present moment. And if you want to attack your present moment, the future is going to beat you down by neglect and by regret and by bitterness towards yourself and all the things that set in You know, once we don't get after it. So. Yeah, they, um, so Ty and Travis also like kind of, Oops. go ahead, what? <laughs> we had a little phone call coming in. Um, fear is an excellent motivator to push you to work harder and do the best you can. Kind of the same, like, uh, fear and excitement, uh, creates the same chemicals in your body. Mm -hmm. So, so it's almost like the fear, you can use the fear and excitement to move yourself forward, but fear and excitement, kind of like sending off the same chemical reaction in the body. Yes. That, you, that, you can use, you read psychology books and those kinds of things a lot. Yes. So it's called, it's, it's called the magnification principle in that I can, I can magnify pleasure in what I'm going to get out of some situation or some scenario. Uh, I can magnify that, like how awesome it's going to be when I conquer and I achieve the goal. I magnify that to the extreme that I can feel it. Right, Steve Murray just came on. We had, had Steve had a great mentor who was his friend, but I've learned so much from who's passed away now, Mr. Tice. But he talked about the importance of creating a very, very vivid picture, an emotionally vivid picture of what it is that you wanted to to achieve. And he called it I times V equals R, which was imagination times vividness equals a result. And over time, if you can imagine some picture as vivid as possible, getting all of your emotions engaged in it, how it's going to look, how it's going to feel, right? All those things, it creates a space in your brain where your brain doesn't know whether that's it, you've actually made it happen or not. It just starts to have the experience of it. And that's, that's basically what's so powerful with our brain is once you've done something and had an experience of it, 
you expand your capacity to where you can handle it. Now it's not that big of a deal. When you see a team that's going back to a sporting event, like a championship team that's been there time and time and time again, they typically operate with much more confidence. They play a lot better typically, in most cases, because they've been there, they've had an experience of that. Mm -hmm. So you gotta create experiences in your mind. And one of the ways you can do that is the magnification principle, which is I magnify how awesome it's gonna be when I achieve this financial goal, how awesome it's gonna be when my relationship is working really well, how great it's gonna be when I feel physically fit, how great it's gonna be when my family and I can go on a trip together and we can do something. That's magnifying. You can then magnify the fear component, which is this, which is it is the awfulizing principle Right, and that is, oh my God, if I don't get this done, this this would suck. And you hold that picture long enough that it provokes you to begin and get started. And Steve just said it, fear yeah. alerts, but it shouldn't direct. Like you don't live with fear. You, you can. There's a difference between being careful and being fearful. Careful is I'll make adjustments, right? Noticing that I could screw things up, but fearful is that I don't ever even start. I don't even do it. I operate with this energy that, oh my God, I, what if, what if? And it's just, it, it suppresses so much of our creativity and our ability. And so anyway, this is, there's so much on this. What Justin say to me, this is why working out is a great snapshot of how to handle life. How I handle the situation when my body something doesn't want to any further. Doesn't want to do it any it. further. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You push Go yourself to, to failure. Failure, that's what they say. All the time. Yeah. And so, um, Bubba said Second Timothy one seven. And so uh, what false evidence appearing fear. yeah, real. Yeah. Don't live by fear, no. right? So you know, this is the idea of I this is my lens on it. Guys, if you look way back there on those pictures, I got all these lenses sitting there, up. I got a yeah. picture of, of my mentor, Mr. Clemmer, up there. Um, I have some art that Addison drew for me up there. <laughs> but I am reminded of people that were willing to push me and say, Ronnie, you are better than that. There's more in you than, than how you're operating. I'm not going to buy your, your story of that you, know, you grew up a certain way. You didn't have this. You didn't have that. Um, that's all the reasons you aren't going for it. You can find story after story after story of people that rose out of abstract poverty, horrible disease, horrible trauma, horrible circumstances, and they overcame and they kept pushing. And so if somebody else can do that, I think any of us watching this, any of us here today experiencing this, we could do the exact same. Mm -hmm. And that's an important element to recognize. The thing that keeps us from achieving a lot of times is simply simply a narrative, a story, something that we've created in our mind. We go back to it because it's familiar. We run that picture in our mind. We imagine that picture. And the more we imagine it, the more our life is directed towards that. We have the emotional kick, the chemical kick. We feel a certain way. We say, this is reality. That's what we behave from. And the next thing you know, we get more and more of the exact same. And then and you justify why you're right about your story. Oh yeah, and you why can now you can't move forward because of that story and you will find things you will look around very subconsciously or unconsciously look around and find things that will justify why you're right about your story and why you can't move forward because whatever. Whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, um, we do this talk around scotomas and scotomas are simply blind spots. Mm -hmm. If you guys don't know what scotomas are, they are blind spots. So, imagine very quickly, you're looking at this video, do you see your nose? Question is do you see your nose? And you say, no, I don't see my nose. And the reason you don't stop rolling your eyes. I see it. <laughs> anyway, you don't see your nose. It's the closest thing to your, to your eyes and you don't see it. And it's right. because your brain has started to say this information is not valuable. When I learned that, it started to change the way I looked at my day because when I don't see this, even though it's this close to my eyes, it's because my brain creates something called a blind spot. And uh, psychologists call it cognitive tunneling, that you focus in on what you say is important. Other things start to fade away in your peripheral, right? You're focused on this. Mm -hmm. This is how you read a book. You're dialed into it. There can be noises going on. You can read a book at an airport. There can be all sorts of things happening around you. But if this is important, then that's what you dial into. And so what you say is important, you go, you're going to find more and more of. And so if I think my story of not being enough or that I don't have the qualifications to succeed is really important to me and I need to defend it, which is what people do all the time. Mm -hmm. If I think my story is right and I need to be right because if I'm not right about that old story, that means I'm crazy and I don't want to be crazy. I need to have this thing figured out and create certainty. Um, if that's how you operate, you're going to find more and more things to validate what you've already made up. And that's because of scotomas. This is how your brain's work, brain works. This is science. This is not just some theoretical idea. 
The more I study the human brain and I find out this neuroplasticity and how things change, the neuropathways in our brain change through practice, the more motivated and inspired I am to go, man, this is all a process of becoming. I can train my brain to be better. And, and that's what it is. Otherwise, you say, well, I can't do it. And if you don't think it's important for you to do it, because Mr. Clemmer used to tell me, he said, Ronnie, if you want to do something long enough, but you don't achieve it, it starts to hurt. And so what your brain does when things hurt, your brain says, okay, pretend like you don't want it. Pretend like you don't want to be in shape. Pretend like you don't want to be fit. Pretend like you don't want to be financially independent. Pretend like you don't want a really passionate marriage. It doesn't matter to you. Pretend, pretend, pretend. Why? It's to dial down the pain that you feel when you don't achieve something that you say that you want. And so we start creating scotomas to those things, blind spots, pretending like those opportunities aren't there. Mm -hmm. But the moment you say, hey, this is a goal. I am accountable to it. It is important that I achieve this. You start, the blind spots start to, to dissolve and you start to see resources that are around you that you didn't know were there. That's a really cool thing. If that's not motivating, I don't know what is, right? If it's not, because then you can say, well, what am I saying is important? That's a great question. What's important to me? Um, sitting around watching the news is important. I need to be informed. That's garbage. Sitting around watching the news is the fastest way to deteriorate the capacity of your brain to be successful and, and, and to create powerful images. Other people have been trained. Just if you've never thought of this, guys, if you've never thought about how the mass media works, there are people that have been trained to hijack your brain and to drop ideas and principles and insights in that are gonna get you to either go for certain things or not go for things. The media doesn't want you to think for yourself. That's why there's two opposing parties all the time. One telling you this, one telling you that. If they can get you to think one or the other, you are controlled. You think you're smarter than somebody else because you watch CNN versus Fox. People that watch Fox think they're smarter than people that watch CNN. Either way, you got to come to the point of going, God, this is all the options there are? Is Fox or CNN? Like, holy crap, this is it? These are the so only two ways this is all I got. people think? This is it. You either think this way or that way, and that's how we're controlled, and we don't know it. And you don't realize you're being controlled. Somebody has gotten a degree, is paid a lot of money to sit on the inside of mass media and tell you how you should think. And you think you're thinking for yourself, and you're not. When you let somebody else think for you, and you get pulled emotionally into a fight that you don't need to be in, then you are no longer in control. So can you vote without being bought in emotionally to hating somebody, some political person? Like... You know, you watch the news long enough, you're either going to hate Nancy Pelosi, you're going to hate, what's his name, Biden, you're going to hate President Trump, you're going to hate somebody. That's their job, is to enemy. piss you off and make you keep watching. Because we always need an enemy. There's always going to be an enemy. There's going to be an enemy called bin Laden, There's gonna, there was an enemy called Gaddafi, there was an enemy called, in, in the Soviet Union, it was Gorbachev, there was an enemy to the terrorism, there's now an enemy of COVID, there's, an, there's always an enemy. And as long as there's an enemy that you can put a face to that you're afraid of, it, it provokes all these emotions. And you gotta keep you gotta keep a bead on that thing, on that enemy, because you don't want it to do you any harm. And this plays back on your need to survive. And it, it will cause you to survive if you watch the news all the time. But you are not going to thrive. I'll tell you what you could do. You could take a sheet of paper like this and you could write a one hundred thousand dollars on it, tape it to your TV screen. And every time you get ready to watch TV that you see $100,000 up there, you could say, this is what it's going to cost me over the next year or two years to sit here on my rear end watching other people tell me how I need to live my life. And, and it's, it's such garbage. That's why we don't watch it. It is toxic. It will ingest ideas into your brain to where now your conversations are about Joe Biden or Donald Trump. Really? Like those people are who you're spending your time talking about? No way, not ever. No, I'm not doing it. I'm gonna sit around and I'm gonna, I can get information from people that I would say I trust and go, hey, what do you think about that? You think this? Okay, great. You can research it, get a little information and be like, okay, yeah, I, I'm probably gonna go with this one. But at the end of the day, you have to decide what's gonna be most important to you. If you decide your life, your productivity is most important, you don't give your attention, your time, your energy to some political figure. I just don't, I refuse to, my marriage is too important, my own peace is too important, my children are too important. I don't let that stupid box that we have in our home control how I show up each day. 
And people, I will tell you, there's a reason you don't see Lamborghini commercials on television because people that drive Lamborghinis don't watch television. Have you ever thought about that before? They don't. I'm just telling you, there's no Rolls Royce commercials on television. Why? They don't watch TV. They don't watch sporting events. They just don't. And you say, well, man, I like sports. I like sports too. It's fine. But how much time are you going to give to it? You're going to root for somebody else more than you're going to root for you and your family and getting crap done? No way. I'll wear a DOS jersey before I'll wear a, a, where do we live? Phoenix. The Phoenix Cardinals. I would wear a DOS jersey for our family and for our kids before because they ain't paying me anything. They're not paying, the Phoenix Cardinals ain't paying me any money. They ain't giving me anything. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm, stop, stop. It's not like it. That's <laughs> no, the deal. Okay. When you get that, you don't want to watch this crap anymore. But if you watch it, it's such, it's so easy to check out because life is so stressful. It is stressful. The comparison to what other people are doing because of what marketers tell you you got to have, what you got to drive, where you got to live, it becomes stressful to keep that up. And when you're stressed, you're looking for relief. And one of the ways you find relief is to sit in front of a television and just check out like I'm so tired. So whatever. But listen, and if you watch TV, guess what? You're going to go in the direction of where they tell you to go. If you pick up a book, you can pick up a book and go, man, I want to read on that topic. I want to learn about this. You I want to learn choose. about that. And I get to choose. Now, I'm not letting somebody with sounds and images of this new. I, I, I went hiking this past weekend, and we, we, we had this really nice cabin in the mountains, and we, we sat there, and we turned on the news for a minute, and I just started laughing because I never watch it anymore. But in a moment of watching, I think it was Fox, it was like, this just in, breaking news, boom, and there's this noise, and there's this spinning red thing, and there's a ticker thing at the bottom, and the time's going, and the news anchor's talking to another news anchor, and one of them's got a mask on, and one of them doesn't, and, and you're just like, oh my God, I don't know what to believe. This is too much. Circus. And then I'm bought in, it's a circus. And the next thing you know, the next thing you know, you just sit there like watching a movie at a theater, and you just want to get popcorn and go, this is the so world. Wild. And the fact of the matter is, the people that are making it happen aren't bought into that cinematic circus. They are just not. They don't buy into it. And so I'm not. And so you have to get clear on what you want, build some structure on it, and attack it. To me, that's faith. Otherwise, you're putting faith in other people to tell you what you need to have with your life, and you're being programmed. You're being programmed every single day. Buy this, wear this, have that, go here, do this, believe this person, hate this person. And ultimately, it all comes down to whoever spent the most money on their campaign ads, typically. And that's... that's, or, or, that's their, or their social media feeds. Oh, their like, social I mean, media if, feeds. If you want to, like, go... Hey, Fra hey, John Thomas, D.C. What's up, Dr. John? <laughs> Frank, what's up, man? Kingsman, my man Frank, what's up? Mm -hmm. um, anyway, guys, that was quite a bit of a rant, and I'm very careful and cautious because you wind up ticking people off when you mess with politics. You know, my mom always used to say, you don't discuss politics or religion in public because, you know, somebody's going to be offended or it's going to hurt somebody's feelings, and the truth is, is that's true. Everybody thinks they're right. And you can't, you can't, I'm, I think you can discuss it as long as it is causing you to move in a forward, healthy direction. And it's not causing more di division. division and toxicity to set in. You can discuss it. You can have responsible conversation. You can talk and, and with someone who is being responsible about it and then make your decisions. But it doesn't have to be a, a di divided hate this person, hate that person. So, yes, we can talk about it as long as it's moving forward in a healthy direction. That's true. Yes. And you're right. And I'm wrong. No, and, you, I'm no, not that's true. saying that. I'm which, like, I know. But, well, that is the thing. It's like, don't discuss this. Don't discuss that. But I think you can discuss it you can. in a certain way. In a Absolutely. Certain and, but think about this. Think about how many people that feel the need to discuss it and be right. Right? Think about this. How many people do discuss it, but their need to be right throws them into an emotional uh, level of lack of uh, emotional level of ignorance to where now I hate somebody who has a different view on something than me. And the fact of the matter, the reason that that person has the view on it that they do is they've probably seen more than you've seen it from that. You know, if, if somebody that watches CNN and you're fighting because you watch Fox and you hate the person, chances are they aren't a career politician that has studied or learned or a lawyer or whatever. They aren't. And they just come up with this, this uh, agenda and a belief because that's what they were first told. It's your first thought is typically the thing. This is why first impressions are so important. 
If your parents tell you, yeah, we definitely always want to be a Republican, your parents always tell you you want to be a Democrat, on some level you're, you're programmed to think that's the right way. Mm -hmm. and, and because of confirmation bias, you start looking for more and more and more. And honestly, there's a quote I shared a lot. I'm not saying you don't need to know and be informed on how you vote and get as much information as possible, but there's an old saying that the left, the, the left wing and the right wing are connected to the exact same bird. And I think that's the truth. Mm -hmm. I think politically there's that. And I think we got to be really careful. You can love this country without loving the government. And how do you do anything about it? Well, you get out there, you work, you create, you do the best that you can do, and you serve your fellow man in your community. You think globally, but you work locally. You do for those that are around you. You encourage, you support, you help them navigate this fear, this worry that's trying to be poured in on all of us at all times. And it's very sad if you allow it. You know, people are like, man, this is so sad, it's heartbreaking. Yes, it is, but you know what? There's always been problems in this country. There's always been challenges, and every single time, we have always overcome it. Every single time, and we always will. This country is made up of a lot better people than the idiots that we see on television that call ourselves our leaders. They are not leaders. They are not. They have the depth, I mean, the depth of a dollar bill. They do. This you look how thin a dollar bill is. Most politicians and leaders have the depth of a dollar bill. And the fact of the matter is, I wouldn't follow them. If I spent time with them, I'd look at how they treated their family. I'd look at how they talked to their friends. I'd look at the people that respected them or didn't respect them. I'd be around them enough to go, you know what? I don't necessarily believe you. I don't think you have the best intentions of all the people in this country that you say you lead at heart. And I think that's garbage. I think that's the problem. I think they're greedy. I think that they just care about getting a vote. And I think when you get bought into that, Anyway, that's how did we get on this from, I don't know. from procrastinating? It didn't, I'm, I apologize that it went this way. But I think it needs to be addressed. It's like, you know what? Turn off the news for a while. Find out what's fear. important to you. Fear and allowing fear in. That's how we kind of got there. Yeah, it's think, fearful, right? Yeah. Like you always, if we do this, this is going to happen. We do that. Yes, decide and, and stand for it. But just don't hate on another person who's trying to, at the same time, pay their own bills, take care of their family. And if that's somebody's priority... If it's to take care of their family, encourage them, support them in doing them. There's always going to be a different approach. People are different. We are so complex. Our brain, made up of trillions and trillions of cells, neurons, all these different things that, that cause us to be so complex. Just love, love the crap out of people and love you enough. Love you enough while you love other people. Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love yourself, which means, yes, I'm kind. I'm going to do for other people, but I'm also going to love me enough to take care of me so that I can help somebody else when they need it. Jim Rohn quote, I take care of me for you if you'll take care of you for me. So, yep. did you drink straight espresso this morning? <laughs> no, actually, I was got up. got that IV drip in there. <laughs> what time was I up, Steve Murray? 5 a.m., as always. So, anyway. 5 a.m. club here. Ronnie Doss for president. Jim Doss for president. I'll be your running mate. Ooh. <laughs> oh, come on. Anyway. Um, what else? Anything else we want to talk about? We're almost at an hour. I am. Um, Saturday. So let's... It's let's... Saturday. What day is it? It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Go it's your birthday. It's a birthday. So anything that you want to say before we go? I think we need to, to wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Um, wrap it up. <laughs> lock it up. Oh, my bad. You That's lock what it is. up. Go for it. Lock it up. <laughs> Thank you, Allison. My birthday. Um, I oh. just wanted to, I had a thought a little while ago and I wrote it down about the neuroplasticity and the rewiring what you believe and rewiring your brain. And I, I had um, this thought about epigenetics and I'm no, no scientist. No, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know a lot about it, but I do mm -hmm. know that you can rewire from what you've been born with as your genetics and what you are predisposed to as far as um, like if you were born into a family who was diabetic or overweight or whatever, you can change your genes and your genetic makeup through your daily habits. And I think that is very parallel to, to our brain and yeah. to what we're talking about. So focusing on the way that you can change your epigenetics for your body also, yes, is very important, but for your brain. Yes. So wiring. epigenetics has a lot to do with what environment you immerse yourself into. Yeah. That you become so much like the environment. You know, we were talking about this the other day. We live in the desert now, Scottsdale. Um, snakes, they're snakes. Our landscape guy told me the other day, he's like, yeah, I saw a rattlesnake up the thing. And so I pulled up different types of rattlesnakes and looking at it. And it's amazing how the rattlesnakes look so much like the rocks that they lay up against, right? It's, it's like the chameleon, you know, that yeah. becomes like the color. We're a lot like that. We become so much like the environment that we're in, and that's the conversation on epigenetics, is that there's certain things 
that triggers certain uh, responses within you genetically that turn on certain cells, turn off certain cells that get certain things to um, respond a certain way within you. And so people get sick because of they've uh, uh, made themselves exposed to certain carcinogens or things, toxins, you know, toxins. Yeah. That's the conversation of epigenetics. You should pull it up. I think it just shows more and more how profoundly adaptive our bodies are on so many levels that we don't even understand right now. That's why, for me, it's so exciting studying science in the brain. It's like, oh my gosh, man, any story that I've made up is just a story. And it doesn't have to be true at all. And the more I understand how this control center up here works, the more I'm going to utilize it in the best way and maximize its potential. And so epigenetics, uh, it, it's, it has a lot to do with exposure. They did a study, They um, it was the city of New York, they did a study where uh, they looked around when there was graffiti and they noticed that areas where there was graffiti that they went in and they cleaned it up. They painted over graffiti, they repaired broken windows, torn down doors in certain areas of the city. And when they did that, crime went down. And when, when they allowed graffiti to come back in and, and you know, have to where the, the the environment, how the, it looked worse than what it did before, uh, that provoked people to believe that it was uncared for and it was unkept. And so cr crime in that area went back up. There's a resurgence of crime. And so what that tells us is that our atmosphere and environment matters so much. And so we get to decide where we immerse ourselves. And so for me, there's a reason that, and I talked to my daughter about this, There's my office is straight. I know where things are. There's things that I look at in my office that inspire me. I, I read books. I, I look at things that inspire me because I know how important that is. If I'm looking out the window at, at broke down, busted things that aren't kept and taken care of, it fires off something inside of me and going, well, you know, it's just, it's not important to take care of things and details. Uh, my mentor, Mr. Clemmer, used to say, look, we'd go into a seminar room. He would always talk about how the chairs needed to be exactly straight. And he said, the reason the chairs need to be straight is that when people see that you've taken care of those details, they believe that you are going to take care of them. Now, that means that details matter, and details do matter. You know, it, I just go back to this time where someone asked my mentor, said, well, I want to move to this, this newer apartment in, in this new place in the city. And he said, but I don't know if I can afford it. And Mr. Clemmer's answer to him was, well, I don't know if you can't afford it, like you can afford not to. And, and what he was saying is, can you afford not to step up your game and live at another level? Because it does something to your mind when you keep looking at things that cause you to go, oh, there's not enough, no abundance. There's, it just messes with your mind. Doesn't mean you're a good person. Doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It just, it's just coming to the understanding that your brain works in a certain way based on what it's seen. And so, anyway, um, yes. Happy birthday, Jenna. We're going to sing to her. I am not a singer. Yeah, yeah you sang to me earlier. Happy birthday. I, I was singing and doing a dance earlier, and, <laughs> and I thought I was just dancing and singing for Jen. Ah! And come to find out, Addison, I wasn't. My Addison daughter had Addison her head peeked around the corner, and I was just dancing and doing the birthday thing. She was like, <sighs> She was like, wow. And I was like, your dad, dad? has, your dad has <laughs> skills, Addie. Your dad, <laughs> bull, bull, bull. No, I. Travis, really, you no, let me tell you, Trav, I've got skills. And, no, I'm not going to sing, but we are going to have a great day today with Jen's birthday. Um, <laughs> Dr. Kanima said, it's okay, I'm singing. That, I don't know if that's singing true. Drew or Kanima. <laughs> Drew or Kanima, it's probably both of them, the crazies. I love them. And those um, three baby girls. Uh, yes, yeah. so, uh, Chris, happy birthday Thank to Jen. Thank you, guys. Um, anything else? We're, we're right at an hour. I don't want to take any more time. So I just want to say, for our word for the day, I think we put this up here as courage. Right? Mm -hmm. Didn't we put that up at the as like the the title or whatever of this yeah. live? The courage. What are you drawing no, just down keep, there? Just keep going. He's drawing something. <laughs> um, the just having the courage to recognize that if if you are a little fearful of doing something new, what's going on right now? Podcast. <laughs> oh, you wrote backwards. it backwards, so it wouldn't show That's up negative. Good. Here, we'll do That's it funny. Go. Keep talking. Podcast. Yes. No, Podcast. Um. Okay. Anyway, so if. The, the word for today is courage, and I think that this might be something that we're going to do from now on is have a, have a word for each of these times that we do a live on Wednesday evenings and Saturday mornings um, is take, take what you know is causing fear or procrastination and use this as your word and just say, I am courageous, I have courage, I'm going to step through this fear and I'm going to look on the other side of the fear and move through it anyway. Yeah, what would I do, what would I do right now if I wasn't afraid? 
Maybe I would sit down and I'd write out some goals. Maybe I'd write out the dreams yeah. that I have. It takes courage to dream. It takes courage to be creative. It takes courage to believe that you can do something that you haven't already done. And so uh, that's where we're going to live. That's what we're going to continue to do. Um, anyway, so with all that being said, uh, you can check out our podcast. We are at lot. How about that? <laughs> so I wrote awesome. it backwards. That <laughs> looks pretty good. good. Handwriting. That's handwriting. Reverse negative. See if you see our rings are what looks like our looks right like hands, on our right hand. but it's not. Check out podcast. <laughs> uh, just go to iTunes on your iPhone if you would. Just hit the the podcast. It's a purple button. Type in Ronnie Doss. And our pod that looks cool. Emerge, I know. Emerge, and that's gonna that will come up for you. And we did one yesterday together. We yeah. talked. We're doing a lot of these together. It is so much more fun, more engaging. Uh, I've done so many podcasts. I do so many team sessions by myself, and it's much more fun with her with me. So, of course, it is. Podcast, yes, it is fun. It takes <laughs> makes it a little easier. Uh, podcast uh, boost program, RonnieDoss.com forward slash boost. Check that out. Yeah. Use promo code BOOST in all caps. Makes all those videos free. RonnieDoss.com forward slash BOOST. BOOST in all caps. And, and remember, that's it. June 19th, we're doing the, um, we're gonna we're planning on doing an Emerge virtual live event. So instead of it being live in the room with people where we have been working up to those events, and we have one coming in September in Scottsdale here, but June 19th, Emerge virtual. Oh, yeah. And the reason we're doing that, we have our live events that we do, and just with all the, the, COVID weird stuff and getting together, we said we're gonna start doing this more virtual. And so it will be a five to six hour day of me just dropping different modules, exercises and stuff that I do corporately with teams. So it's a very, very valuable day for you. you but can that's do it called, with your team or with you your, your family. Team, your family, sit down, take the day on that Friday. It will be recorded. So if you're gonna be a part of that, um, you register on our website, but it, it will be recorded. You'll get a copy of it also. But you can sit with your team and your family taking notes and writing out things that are going to be very, very supportive to you. So yeah. um, that's it. We're done. We're right at an, a little bit more than an hour. Again, so good. happy birthday. High five. I love you. You're amazing. Birthday high fives. You guys are amazing. Hope you have a wonderful day. We're going to go make a big party here in Scottsdale. We're going to tear <laughs> this town up. This town is not even completely It's not open, even ready. But hey, we're going to... The people that are open, we're going to tear it up. So <laughs> God, you guys have a great week, great day, and uh, thanks so much. We'll see you all next time. Take care. Bye. Bye.